The images you are watching right now are all taken with the Sony 7R Mark II and different lenses, some Sony FE lenses but also some A mount and EF mount lenses. I'm Matt and welcome to a new video review by Mio Lessons and today I'm going to talk to you about my favorite aspect of the 7R Mark II which is, as you can guess, the autofocus capabilities. It's not just a matter of being fast or being accurate, but also the fact that it can work really well with non-native lenses and non-Sony lenses as well. I won't go in details about everything, so if you want to find out more, I invite you to also check out our in-depth article that uh, is a complement of this video. Now the camera has a lot of different autofocus settings and I'm just gonna show you uh, quickly what are my favorite. So in terms of focus area, my go-to settings for most, most of the time is the flexible spot and I usually uh, choose the largest or medium size. And that's where I find the autofocus to be accurate and fast in almost every condition, which is also include low light. Another settings I like is the Zona F, uh, which is very useful for sports action and in continuous AF. I actually wish you could choose, for example, a 2x3 or a 2x2 instead of only having 3x3. Another interesting setting is also the expand flexible spot. Uh, that's useful if you want to use the flexible spot but you're not really sure about which size to pick. Uh, basically the expand flexible spot, we use the small size but if the autofocus doesn't lock it will automatically change it to the uh, largest size. Another focus area I use sometimes is the center. When I want to quickly bring back my focus point at the center. So if for example, I'm having the flexible spot on the top left and I want to bring it back at the center, I find it more quickly to just reach to the center instead of activating the flexible spot and then moving it with a control wheel. And another interesting setting is of course the lock on AF, which is basically 3D tracking. The camera will start to uh, track your subject uh, it will change the shape of the focusing area according to uh, the size of your subjects and it does that really well. In single F, I keep the focus area to center so that I can use the control wheel button to start or cancel tracking at any time. In continuous F, I choose the dedicated expand flexible spot for the lock on AF mode so that I can start tracking simply by half pressing the shutter release button. Now let's move on and let's talk about the autofocus with the native FE lenses. Of course, the FE lenses are my reference to judge how good this camera can be. And I must say, overall, it does really well. It does well in good light, in low light, it does well in single and continuous autofocus. What I like about this camera is that the autofocus performance is very consistent. I rarely get misfocused shots or completely blur shots. I rarely get some back and forth movement on the F lens element because the camera can't focus on a particular scene or a particular subject, even in low light. It's not perfect, you will get some slightly out of focus shots sometimes. Sometimes it will be slightly slower, but overall it's really good. The performance can vary a little depending on the lens used. Uh, for example, with the 24 to 240 millimeter, I find the continuous F struggling a bit more to keep tracking the focus on the subject. With a lens like the 70 to 200 millimeter, it was much faster, much more consistent. There's one thing that is not really negative but I can highlight is as you probably know the camera he uses 25 conscious detection points and 399 face detection points. The latter is the one that will give you the best performance and the most accurate results. But with FE lenses, with native lenses, the camera automatically pick contrast or face detection. In single AF mode it will always use contrast detection point in continuous, it will tend to use contrast detection when you use the center or the flexible spot area. If you switch to zone F or wide, it will tend to use more phase detection points. 
With conscious detection, you will always get this very fast back and forth movement of the lens element when you are focusing. And what's interesting is that when you're using a mount or Canon lenses and you can manually choose face detection instead, it almost looks like in single F mode, the camera is focusing faster because with face detection, you don't have that back and forth movement. It's not a big deal, but it's just something interesting to consider. When you use continuous AF, even with control detection, I noticed that this back and forth movement is less present. So sometimes continuous AF can also be slightly faster even with a non-moving subject. Uh, the camera also has other settings such as face detection, uh, smile shutter, which means that basically it takes the shot when the person is smiling. It's actually not bad, but uh, it's not something I would rely on it all the time. But one thing that's very interesting is the IF option. Basically, the camera will always lock focus precisely on the eye of the subject. And that's very interesting for portrait photography. It does work really well uh, as long as the face is big enough inside your frame. And as long as there are not elements around the eye that can interfere, like for some example, the shot you are seeing right now, that's where the IIF struggled because the face wasn't entirely visible. It's best to use it in continuous AF and not single AF. You have to assign it to a custom button. You press the custom button and then you take the shot. The camera can shoot up to five frames per second, even in continuous F, which is a good performance. I almost wish you could have a faster speed, even by lower the megapixel. I mean, I would love to choose, for example, 20 or 24 megapixel and have a faster burst rate like 7, 8. Also, the faster burst you can have in the viewfinder, the more easy you can track uh, your subject while taking the burst shot. Uh, of course, it's better to shoot in JPEG only, even with the extra fine quality, the camera will never really stop taking photos. So now let's start with DSLR lenses and let's start with Sony A-mount lenses. Now, there's one thing that is important to know. With Sony A-mount or Canon EF-mount lenses, you're gonna lose some of the IF settings I showed you before. You cannot use IIF, you cannot use lock-on IF, you cannot use zone area. It's a shame in a way because some of these settings are really, really useful, especially in continuous mode. Also, um, I'm gonna show you a few settings that are very important, especially with DSLR lenses. One of them is priority set in IFS and IFC. Basically, you can choose between IF release and balance emphasis. So the camera will prioritize focusing or taking the shot. Balance emphasis is supposed to be a smart option where the camera understands when it's better to prioritize IF and when it's better to prioritize the shot. With DSLR lenses, always use IF, so always use focus priority. With balance emphasis, the camera will often prioritize the release and not track the focus accurately. You can see an example right here. I had trouble to keep tracking of the rider exiting the band, and when I switched to focus priority, I had better results. Of course, another very important setting is that you can now manually choose contrast or face detection for the IF system, always use face detection. The big deal about the Sony A7R Mark II is that its IF system allows you to use the LA-EF3 adapter instead of the LA-EF4. The latter has its own IF system built inside, so it's larger and more expensive. The former is less expensive and actually smaller, so more interesting to use. The first time I had the chance to use A-mount lenses was during the Sony press event, and I was already impressed by how fast and accurate the IF could be even in some backlit situations. It wasn't as fast as with the FE lenses, but it was very promising. Lately, I had the chance to use the 70 to 400 millimeter. Uh, there's something I have to say, uh, to be completely honest, the 70 to 400 I tried is the version one, which is now discontinued. There's a version two that is supposed to have a faster autofocus motor. In single IF, again, I'm using the flexible spot, the largest size, and it works fine. Even in backlit situation, even with not a lot of light, but enough contrast, the camera managed to focus fast with this lens. I rarely had any back and forth movement or weird behavior. In continuous IF, with very fast subject, the camera had more problem. For example, in the shot you can see right now, the camera lost focus progressively and as you can see here I probably missed a very good shot. One solution I find for other events is to keep the continuous AF 
mode, but use the single shot instead of continuous. And that gave me better result because the camera was taking one shot at a time and could track focus more accurately. With more distant subjects like swimmers in the sea, the camera had less trouble focusing as you can see in these images right now, despite the subject being almost entirely submerged and with splashing that could easily confuse the sensor. So overall the autofocus performance is not bad, but the camera is faster with the native FE lenses. One last thing is about the adapter, the LAEF3. It works well, but sometimes the uh, communication between the lens of the camera fails and actually the camera switches to manual focus. So you have to unmount the adapter, unmount the lens and remount everything to make it work again. So now let's talk about Canon EF lenses. There are lots of Canon and third-party EF mount lenses and haven't tried all of them. Actually, my experience is mainly with Sigma EF mount lenses. Now, you might probably ask why not use the Sigma A mount version since Sigma has a Sony version for most of its lenses. But the truth is they're not easy to find and even Sigma UK doesn't store lots of A-mount lenses because photographers and press always ask for the Canon or Nikon versions. But it doesn't really matter for a few different reasons. Uh, first, I haven't found a lot of difference between using a Canon lens or a Sony A-mount lens. Actually, with some EF lenses I got very very fast performance. The second reason is you will likely find more EF lenses on the market even secondhand you have more choice and what's interesting about Sigma is that you have a lot of very good lenses at a very affordable price. Another thing of course is the adapter, which adapter to use. The best so far I use is the one that everyone recommends which is the Metabon Mark IV. That's the one that gave me the most accurate result and the most constant behavior and performance. It's expensive but it has a USB port and it can receive firmware updates and actually Metabones release firmware updates quite often and recently they released the version 1.8 especially for the S7R Mark II. So if you intend to use a lot of Canon lenses it's probably a worthwhile investment. Another adapter that I use quite a lot is the Photodiox Pro EF2 Next. Now this is a very frustrating adapter and the reason I'm saying this is that in terms of IF performance it can do really really well. The problem is that it has a lot of issues. For example, if you zoom in and take the shot right away, the camera was going to close the shadow but not reopen it. So you have to turn off the camera in order to reset it. If you use uh, magnification, it will cause problems as well. Sometimes if you activate the optical stabilization, the camera will switch to manual focus instead. Even the exposures change between one shot and the other. So that gives you a good idea how this adapter can be problematic. But it's a shame because with certain lenses it does well. For example, the Sigma Art series, uh, right now I have the 24 to 105 mm 4. It does perfectly well with the 24 1.4 Art, perfect as well. So that shows you that the performance you can get with the 7 Mark II and Canon lenses really also depends on the adapter. There are more adapters that are coming on the market. Not all of them are easy to find on eBay and Amazon as well, so that can also be a problem. So right now the Metabones is the best and the Photoyox can work really well with a few lenses. So uh, with some lenses like the Art Series, I find it really, really fast in single IF. As I said before, it's, since you can manually choose the face detection point, sometimes it's even faster than with FE lenses. I didn't have any problem in low light in backlit situation. It's almost like using FE lenses. Of course, it's not just a question of the adapter, it's a question of the lens itself. For example, the 70-200 2.8 from Sigma it won't work with the Metabones, it won't work with the Photoyox, it won't work with anything. Probably the, the only option you got is the M1 version. So that shows you that some lenses can work, some other lenses cannot work well or cannot work at all. My advice is if you can, try before buying or do your research to understand which adapter and which lens can give you better results. I had a lot of experience also with the 150 to 600 mm contemporary version, which actually doesn't exist in the mount version yet. I use it for birds photography, I use it for sports photography like uh, motorbike race. It wasn't perfect and I think the hit rate was about 50-60%, which is already good in my opinion, but it's not perfect. So, I mean, of course, it won't be the optimal choice for sports photography, but you can still get very good results. 
I also noticed that with zoom lenses and especially with very long zoom lenses like this one, it is better to use the center area or to keep the flexible spot at the center. If you move it on the left, on the right, the camera will have a hard time focusing and probably will miss focus more than anything else. What about autofocus performance for video? Overall, I would say the results are more inconsistent and less accurate. The main reason is that the camera uses contrast detection only when uh, recording video, so you have a slower result. Forget using it with A mount lenses or EF mount lenses, you just choose low and most of the time won't focus. With FE lenses, you can get acceptable results with not too fast subject if you use the low con IF. So if you use the tracking, I find it often more reliable than just using continuous IF and the uh, center area or the zone IF area. And finally, we are at the conclusion. The last point I want to bring is, does it make sense to use non-native Sony lenses on the S7R Mark II? In my opinion, it depends. With Sony, I would say the S7R Mark II gives the opportunity to Sony users that own different Amon lenses to use it on the S7R Mark II with good results. So it helps them transitioning from the Amon system to the mirrorless system. With Canon and EF mount lenses in general, I think there are more possibilities. Option number one, it can help someone that wants to start using a mirrorless system to use its Canon lenses with both cameras. Option number two, it can be someone that wants to switch to the Sony system but don't want to sell all its Canon lenses yet. And option number three, it means that it gives you more choice. Right now there are 10 Sony lenses designed natively for the A7 system and there are also Zeiss lenses like the two Batiste. But it's nothing compared to the wide offering from Canon, Sigma, Tamron, so these lenses can fill a gap. Another thing to consider is the size of and weight of certain lenses. Of course, the first argument for me would be I have a heavier and larger combo between the lens, the adapter and the camera. But if you take, for example, the 45mm 1.4 FE lens, it's actually about the same dimension and weight as the Canon and Nikon equivalent. For example, Sigma has the 45mm 1.4 Art, that is more affordable. And even if you have an adapter in the way, you won't see a huge difference concerning size and weight. So, thank you for watching. Hope you find all this very interesting. If you want to know more, of course, you can, as usual, leave a comment on this YouTube video. I invite you to check also our, my in-depth article about the autofocus on mirrorlesson.com because I actually explain more settings and give you a few more tips uh, on how to use this camera at its best. I also share my personal customization regarding all the buttons to have every settings quickly accessible when I need to. So thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.